Hey everybody, Questwise here. We're here in the library today. This is my cool um, play mat that I picked up. Uh, actually, was um, made one of our sponsors, Nolan Nasir. He's an artist and um, designer, and takes all of his art, puts them onto mouse pads and play mats. Uh, if you want to get a copy for yourself and see some of his other really cool stuff he has out there, check out. Um, I think it's called N3 Art. And uh, the art of Nolan Nasir, and you can buy these for, directly from his website. These things are amazing. They're kind of mouse pad material. Very, very cool. I'll put a link down below in the notes, and you can take a look at this. But I use this one a lot for when I'm using and when I'm playing Call of Cthulhu. It fits the tone very, very well. You got this cool, like, elder symbol here on the floor. Uh, all the library uh, books on the shelf here, as well as this cool sort of stairwell leading into the sort of depths of this underground library but today i do want to talk about something cthulhu today i want to do an actual review of trail of cthulhu i'm gonna kill these lights because it is really drowning out my camera there we go all right trail of cthulhu the actual i did a, last week i did an unboxing of this when i first showed up and i uh, told my first impressions on what i thought about this game Today I want to talk to you about the actual game itself and my full review on what I think of this game. Um, thoroughly impressed uh, by I just you know off the bat. First of all, Trail of Cthulhu is by Kenneth Height. It's based on the Gumshoe system by Robin D. Laws. It's put up by Pelgrim Press. Um, the book itself is very very nice. It's very uh, well constructed as far as, as, as construction and publication goes. It's hardcover. Um, it's, you know, retails for $39.95. And I love this trail of Cthulhu. A whole new way to go mad and die. So if you are familiar, if you're, if you're a player of Call of Cthulhu, whether it be, oh... 7th edition or any of the newer ones, you're going to be very familiar with just about everything that's in here. So basically what Kenneth Height has done as is that he's taken the, the entire idea of Call of Cthulhu, the role-playing game, and ported it over and, and uses the gumshoe system to run it as opposed to the percentile uh, system that it uses, a D100 system that Chaosium uses. Uh, I believe this is, if I... I don't know where I saw that at, but I believe this is under license from uh, Chaosium, so that all the material in here uh, is being used under the copyright um, from them for their for their Call of Cthulhu, their version of the role playing game. So again, like I said, if you have, have played Call of Cthulhu Seventh Edition and or before, um, you'll be very familiar with a way a lot of this uh, is formatted. Excuse me. Uh, as far as like everything that goes from investigations, investigators, and or uh, the the sanity uh, aspect of the game, you're going to be very very familiar with, uh, to anybody who's played that before. What does what makes Trail of Cthulhu unique? Well, it's the Gumshoe system itself. Um, a lot of times in other games, when you're running an investigative type of a game, when you're running a game in which um, you're trying to discover clues in order to unlock some sort of a mystery to solve some sort of a crime or some sort of um, you know, uh, enigma. There's always a chance that you're going to roll dice poorly and you're going to come up with the fact that you've missed some sort of important clue and thus it derails the game or at least it forces the game master um, to try and rewrite the scenario or sort of re-improv the scenario so that you, the, the player characters are able to try to discover this clue again. It can be a pain in the neck sometimes. So what the gumshoe system says is that if you're in the right place at the right time with the right skill, you automatically get the clue. So there's no rolling for that clue. If you happen to be in the right place, and that's the, that's the key to the game is that actually getting your investigators together and discussing about what it is, how this, you know, what it is that you need to find in order to solve this case. Uh, so, for instance, if you it's if, if if it's a murder scene, 
Uh, as long as you r arrive at the murder scene and you have some sort of skill that's relevant, say forensics or medical examining or, you know, whatever it might be, um, you're going to automatically get at least the base amount of clues that you need to push the invest investigation further on. The gumshoe system also has a sense, or also has a, a scheming way of uh, when you build your characters, you 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 have these build points, and you can put them into certain skills. The more build points you put into a skill, especially investigative skills, you can spend those skills, those skill points, excuse me, in order to create uh, a situation where the the game master will give you even further clues or deeper amount of clues. So you might find, um, uh, you know, an, uh, an ID. Uh, it's, you know, off the top of my head, I'm just coming up with an idea. But And then you spend a build point in one of your investigative skills, and the Game Master is uh, obligated to give you further and deeper clues. Those, those build points also kind of fall into other skills, too. So like driving or shooting or um, climbing or whatever other skills that you have. And those can be spent in order to increase your chance of being successful at one of those other skills. That's the gumshoe system in a nutshell. If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you know that I'm a huge, huge fan of rolling dice. I love rolling dice. I love rolling big pools of dice. I love rolling D20s. I love rolling percentiles. That's what I really love about the Call of Cthulhu system. Is that to me, the percentile system or the D100 system is very... Um, intuitive, and I find that I love rolling the two together and rolling a percentile type system. So, when I got this game, I was a little bit wary, but that has all changed. After having read through the book and tried out a few things and created a few sample characters, just to, I find that the best way to learn a game is to actually create a character, and it gives you a good sense of what the game is trying to teach you and how the game should wants to be played. The unique thing about Trail of Cthulhu is that that is all you need to play the game. A single six-sided die is all you need to play this game. So once you buy the book, you get a pen and some paper, you can scrounge through your old Monopoly set, grab one of these for each player, and you are ready to go. Now what's interesting about this, and having just said that I love to roll dice a lot, why would I like a game that uses only a D6 to, to basically run every aspect of the game? Why would I like that? I'm intrigued. I think, and I've grabbed one of these old white D6s I've had laying around the house for years. The reason I grabbed this is because I think it fits the nostalgia of the game. You're playing in a game that's set in the 1930s, 1920s, 1930s, in that decade, that those couple decades there. The game itself, even just the front cover, gives you a sort of a sense of that time period, that era. And I think that by using sort of very cinematic dice approach to this game would be would being doing it a disservice. I think that this D6, this single D6, then rolling a single D6 for every aspect of the game fits very well with the style of this game. I think it's very, very unique. I think it's very, very interesting. And having tried it out, having just tried it out a few times, I find this to be very intuitive and I find it to be very simple. It's easy to teach people that you're able to grasp this right away. And it's not a game about hard dice mechanics. It's not a game about about crunch it's a game about investigation and improv and thinking on your feet so i wouldn't recommend this game to a person who's fairly new to role playing i wouldn't recommend this to a person who likes to be very a murder hobo as it were who just wants to hack and slash because this is not a very cinematic die it's not you're not going to get lots of cinematic action where you are, you know, um, hacking or slashing your way through. Now they're, you know, through mooks and, and huge hordes of bad guys. Now there are two different styles of, of play in this game. There's the traditionalist or the uh, purist version uh, where you're playing just a normal human who is investigating. 
and and it's 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 under the idea that you know you literally are just a person uh an ordinary day everyday person uh and then there's also the aspect of using in a sort of pulp style game which uh, Call of Cthulhu does as well too with their Pulp Cthulhu uh, supplement that just came out, which Pulp kind of gives it a little bit of an extra push. Now, in Call of Cthulhu by Chaosium, their Pulp sort of pushes those boundaries out to say like Doc Savage, The Shadow, um, you know, some of the more pulpier, thicker, faster, deeper sort of Pulp kind of thing. With this, I get a sense, and I haven't tried the pulp aspect of this yet at the table, but through reading through it, I get the sense that this pulp is more on the line of, say, like, lower level pulp. Um, think Indiana Jones, maybe. Now, Indiana Jones might even be pushing that a little bit as far as well, too, um, because there's a lot of huge cinematic scenes in, in, in that. Now, you can do that with this game, and you can do it with the single D6. And Kenneth Height does a great way of describing how to do that. And next week, we're actually going to also be talking about another game by Kenneth Height um, called Knight's Black Agents. And we're going to see how he takes this symbol, the simple gumshoe system by Robin Laws and pushes it into a spy thriller type theme. And I'll show you that next week when we do the review on that. But I think today I just, you know, I want to talk about the pulpiness of this. I think that the gumshoe system fits this very 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 well um what are my other thoughts about this game the game is beautifully produced uh, we took the, we talked about this a little bit uh last week when we did the unboxing um but the theme of the book itself the artwork the way that the, the page laid out and everything are uh, are really really well done and it really fits the theme and the mood of this game uh, the artwork, again, is amazing. Very, very well done. Some of it's very, very creepy. Some of it's very evocative. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, too. Uh, last week when we did the unboxing, I showed you this front cover, and I said, oh, these are kind of cool little symbols. There's a reason for these. In the game, there are two symbols that pop up throughout the text uh, pretty often, and it's these two symbols here. What these represent is anything that's marked by this symbol is a purist type of a game. You'll use those rules for more of a purist type of game. And anytime you see this symbol, it's going to be more for a pulpy type game. And so that you can easily discern between the two, hey, is this going to overpower my game? Eh, not if I'm playing a pulp game, but if I am playing a pulp game and you know I'm trying to use this rule, it might be a little, or if I'm using a purist game and I'm trying to use the pulpy rules um, for this type of game, it might overpower a little bit. But, so that's what these two symbols are about. And I think that's really, really a great distinction and does a really, really great job as opposed to printing a separate book just for the pulp stuff. Um, there's a great way of separating it in text as well. Everything's in here that you would expect from a Cthulhu book, um, from the Cthulhu mythos pages and the creatures you're going to encounter there, as well as just uh, regular stuff. Here's the Migo, um, as well as just regular creatures, as well as like zombies and... Um, ghouls and such as well too so all that kind of stuff is, is contained in this one book um there's uh some great uh yeah story it goes into the gods and the titans of the cthulhu mythos and so uh you know the creatures in the back here and then some of these other like hastur um uh are, are all contained inside this as well too nice chapter on that um there's a great oh i don't want to talk about this too i almost forgot about this the way that Kenneth does sanity in this is brilliant. So I love the sanity mechanic. I think the sanity mechanic is is one of the coolest things that's ever come out of like role playing games. And I think that Chaosium is definitely the king of the sanity mechanic. There's a little bit of a problem with that sometimes because sometimes when you're running a game and your player characters come across something there's not a distinction between sort of like seeing something that's shocking to you and seeing something that actually harms your psyche. It will definitely damage your brain um, in the Call of Cthulhu. It's all lumped under sanity. What Kenneth Height has done in this game is he's broken sanity and down into two parts. There's stability and then there's sanity. Stability is the thing that you have in everyday life, Okay. 
if you stumble upon a, a, a car accident where there's somebody who's been killed, that's going to rack at your stability. That's going to shock you, okay? But it might not permanently damage your psyche. It might not permanently damage your sanity. It might not drive you crazy, but it will shock you and it will sort of make you fumble for a while and it will make you sort of step back and, and reassess, um, you know, your day <laughs> for that matter. Uh, and so stability is one of those things that is sort of uh, represents the fact that you've been shocked, you've been scared, but it haven't been permanently damaged. And sanity, so, so stability can be re replaced very, very I don't say very easily, but they're way easier than sanity. Sanity is a more of a permanent damaging to your brain, to your psyche, to your outlook on life. And that's where you get, you gain phobias and you gain um, manias and, and insanities. So stability. And I, I, again, Kenneth, thank you for doing this. I think it's a great way of sort of differentiating between the two because Sometimes you want your to put your characters in situations where, where they're not going to be facing sanity-shattering creatures like Cthulhu himself, but they may come upon something that's very, very shocking and scary to them, and it might throw them off their game for a while. And so as you lose your stability, it begins to wane on your character. So there might be times where you might freeze, you might scream, you might run away, Um but it's definitely going to shock you for a little bit. But those are things that you can run away from. You can gather your wits about yourself and then come back. So again, I'm going to use the, the, the crime scene. You step into a room, you see a dead body, a horrible you know, crime uh, has been committed and it shocks your character. It, 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 it tears away at their stability and mental, mental stability. But if that character is able to leave for a while and sort of collect their thoughts, they're able to come back. There's no permanent damage done in that kind of thing. Where sanity, you know, facing a Cthulhu creature or, you know, having watched a loved one be torn to shreds by a wild animal, those are things that are going to tear at your sanity and they're going to have long lasting effects. So, again, one of the great, great ways that um, sanity is, is, is dealt with in Trailer Cthulhu. So, uh, I think that's it. There's a few other reviews out there. I will try to put the links down below to some of those other reviews. They've all been done very, very well. But again, my thanks to Kenneth Height and to Robin Laws for putting together a game like this. It's this been out for a few years now, but um, I think it definitely deserves to be at the forefront of the sort of horror investigation genre. And I highly, highly anticipate getting my copy of Knights Black Agents to be able to review that for you as well, too. That's on its, It's in the mail. It's on its way here. I've uh, been following the tracking information for the past couple of days. Uh, but I'm very interested in seeing how Kenneth is going to take the gumshoe system and apply it to a more modern-day thriller. Uh, again, modern-day spy thriller with horror attached to it as well, too. So until then, uh, I am QuestWise. If you're going to game, game well. And be nice to everyone. I'm QuestWise, and we are out.